Hi guys, this is Kayla. And this is Becky and we're with A Couple of Bees Read. Yes, and one of our favorite things to do is to predict book of the month picks. So we are doing it a little early this month just because it's well, going to be June before you know it. You it know? is, and, and school's going to be getting out, and we have <sighs> vacations coming up and all kinds of things, so we wanted to be you sure. are we going to make videos, Maggie? I, I don't know. I don't know, because you and I are going to be here and yonder and everywhere. Yes, but um, we do have a pretty decent list for yeah. June. Now, keep in mind, June is a really big time for publishing. Mm-hmm. Um, next year, my book comes out June 2025, which makes me so nervous because when I see all the fantastic books that do come out during June, because that is the big, but that's why they're putting your book there because it's going to be, it is so fantastic. I hope so. I it is, believe I mean, me. I've read it multiple times. I've I it think it is. Yeah. Simon and Schuster seem to think it's okay. Yeah. Um, but anyway. That's next year. Yeah. This June, there are so many good books oh, coming out, are. and we are so excited. And we're hoping Book of the Month just picks them all up so that we can have pretty hard covers. Yeah, I to think go they're going to have to have their like at least seven Book of the Month picks and then a whole bunch of add ons. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're going to start with Ellen Hildebrand. Anyone that knows women's fiction knows Ellen Hildebrand. Well, Swan Song, what does that title mean? Uh, we all know swan song means the big ending, you know, and this is supposed to be her last book. This will be her 30th novel and she's retiring from writing. She's doing, she's not like exiting the publishing world or any, she's got a podcast. She's going to do some things with her daughter and everything, but um, swan song, it's based uh, in Nantucket, which is where her books are based and everything, but it is like the grand finale of the Queen of Beach Reads. And, you know, it kind of makes me sad, but um, as I went back and I was looking at all of her books, I noticed, hey, I, there are books of hers I haven't read, even though I've read a lot. So I was like, okay, I can still, you know, look forward to that. But anyway, this is where um, she's she's going with this one song. There's a new couple in town. And you know how new people come in and they can just kind of change the whole dynamic of a place. Mm -hmm. And they have. And they've gotten this big mansion and they like to party. They want to be invited to join, um, I think it, I can't remember the name of the club, the Or Club or something it, like that. It's it's like the elite club, you know, country club on the on the island, and they haven't been invited to join yet. And they're doing everything they can. They're throwing all of these parties and everything, and they happen to be throwing a party on their yacht, and their big mansion burns to the ground. Well, the police chief who's been there forever, for like 30-something years, uh, he's three days away from retirement. Well, all of a sudden, this stuff happens. His daughter's best friend is the assistant to this couple, and she's missing. So he has to put his retirement on hold in order to work the case and find out what in the world is going on with this couple, with this house fire, this missing girl, what is it? And so that's what it's all about. And um, I think she's probably saved the best for last because everybody loves her Nantucket reads. So I'm going to read one of her books. And I can't imagine awesome. Book of the Month not having this. They have had so many books of hers. Yeah. She's a definite repeat author over and over and over again. Surely and she'll be an add on. I mean, this is her last book. They had, I mean, it it should it should be one of their picks, not an album. Yeah. It should definitely be a pick. I just can't imagine it not being. Of all their picks, this is the one I feel like is the most definitive. Yeah. The next one, which you found, I think is also pretty definitive. I do too. It's uh, by Lucy Foley. We mm -hmm. all know the guest list, um, the apartment, um, which I I loved all of that. This one is called The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. And it is opening night at this place called The Manor. And it's all these people are here. They've got all these other cottages and little things around. And they have, everybody is drinking The Manor Mule, which is a, uh, 
what do you call it, signature cocktail of mm -hmm. the manor, okay? And it's got, you know, different things in it. It's got some vodka. It's got some CBD oil and all this kind of stuff in it. Everyone is dressed up uh, a certain way. And, you know, they're just having a good time. Hmm. All of a sudden, there's a fire at the house, and a body is discovered. And then, this manor is on the outskirts of an ancient forest. Mm -hmm. And there's a folklore about the forest. And it, oh. the night birds, and it's like they get justice when law does not prevail. And there's kind of some teaching between the the owners of the manor, the people that come and visit there, and the locals. It's like they're trying to take over the forest, and they're trying to take over the beach and privatize it so that the locals can't be there. And so um, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. So, I mean, definitely, and they have carried Lucy Foley several times, so I can't imagine them not carrying this one. But whether they do or not, I'll be buying it because <laughs> I definitely want to read this. Yeah, any time a thriller author is able to implant folklore, yes, I love it. Like Tana French does that a lot, and it's something I haven't figured out how to do as a writer. So I love reading it when other writers are able to do it. Um, next up... The Rom Commers by Catherine Center. Mm -hmm. I they've carried her books, I think, since The Bodyguard. And yeah. I loved The Bodyguard. And, and Hello Stranger was another one. I have that Yes, one. you have Hello Stranger. I read The Bodyguard and it's it might be my favorite rom like romantic comedy at the very least. Um I don't know, I have like Four that I like. <laughs> um, and if we you have guys, a hard time picking favorites because uh, we like yes. so many. And if you guys follow this blog, you know that there's probably like four that I've read. So um, I just, mystery and thriller is usually my thing. But when it comes to romance, Catherine Center is on my list of mm -hmm. I'm going to read it. In fact, when it comes to the rom commerce, which is about a author whose dream is to be a, um, a screenplay writer who is able to adapt a romance author's book for the small screen and then sparks fly between her and this romance author. Oh. It sounds like a great read to me. Again, that's The Rom-Commers by Catherine Center. I have the galley for this from NetGalley, so I oh, will be good. doing a review for this before it comes out in Ooh, June. I have to look that. really mm -hmm. hope that book of the month carries it because I've only read the first few pages, but Kevin Center is just an actual, an absolute gem. Speaking of favorite authors, you yes. guys know how much I love Riley Sager. Oh, please like, get this book and get it early. Like, uh, his last book. She would grab about it all month if book of the month I, didn't have true. His last book. Book of the Month didn't get until the month after it was published, which was actually just like four days after it was published because it was published on the 28th or something. But coming out June 11th is Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. Mm -hmm. And I feel like since it's June 11th, they should be able to get it. When 10-year-old Ethan went camping with his best friend Billy his, in his parents' backyard, he woke to find his tent slashed and Billy missing. Years later, grown-up Ethan comes back to town and starts to unravel the mystery of what actually happened to Billy. Right. So, Riley Sager, if you've never write, read him before, he is the master of, like, combining thriller and horror and bringing you something that is in between and also just really brilliant. His last book was my favorite of his books, uh, but he is also... A, I think he might be the only author that I've read absolutely everything he's written besides like Jane Austen. So, which is like, I was an English major guys. I mean, come on. Of course I did. Yes. Um, so next up another romance, a novel love story by Ashley Poston. 
Eileen Merriweather, love that name, loves to get lost in the good happily ever after because in her experience, fictional men are far better than the real thing. But when her car unexpectedly breaks down on the way to a book fair, she finds herself stranded in a quaint town that feels like it's right out of a novel. Because it is. So this romance-loving reader finds herself trapped in a romance novel. Like, I just, I love that. A novel love story by Ashley Poston. Hopefully Book of the Month will carry that one. I'm not, again, like, sometimes I love romance and sometimes I'm like, I don't get it. I Where's the murder? But that one is one I would pick up. And then I saw this one and it made me think of you, Becky. <laughs> the Paris Widow oh, yes. by Paris. Kimberly Bell. A dream vacation turns deadly when secrets from the past catch up to a married couple in Paris. In this new edge-of-your-seat thriller from USA Today best-selling author Kimberly Bell. Oh, yes. Sounds right up my alley. Yes. Another reason I went with this is I feel like Book of the Month has been pulling, at least to their add-ons, more like USA Today bestsellers, mm-hmm. like authors who are a little more well-known into that add-on category. Right instead of just authors that they discovered mm. into that category. So that is that is my theory. Work with me here. Yeah, I got you. Um, next up, All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker. It's 1975 in the small town of Montclair, Missouri. Girls are disappearing. When the daughter of a wealthy family is targeted, she is rescued by Patch, a local boy from the other side of the tracks. Uh, Not long after, Patch disappears as well. And this is pitched on Amazon as kind of a love story combined with a thriller, combined with a little bit of like fantasy thrown in there. And I love it when someone is able to melt the genres. Mm -hmm. So All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker. Oh, and the next oh. one, Allie Hazelwood. Here we come again. She's we one of her. We do love her. Not in love. Uh, Ruth Siever has finally found the financial stability that she's craved all of her life as a biotech engineer. Hmm. I always find things with biotech um, very interesting. I don't know why, you know. Um, she is at a food startup. Um, then there's this hostile takeover by this guy named Eli. And it threatens everything that she's worked for. But not only does it threaten her financial security, um, they kind of have a chemistry together. And then they start this secret affair. And they swear they're going to end it once everything is solved and one side or the other prevails. But we all know how that ends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I do think this is supposed to be part of her, like, STEM romance series. Mm -hmm. Um, I've only read her werewolf romance, <laughs> which was phenomenal. Bride was so good. And oh, I can't believe Bride. it was awesome. Like Bride just came out two months ago and yes, she's already putting does. out another romance. And mm-hmm. then I feel like two months before that, she had a young adult. So Allie Hazelwood is doing it all. Yeah. Yeah. And book of the month. If you don't carry this, that's a really big shame, shame, problem. Shame. Like but Aardvark so, will pick it up. We that's right. <laughs> because Aardvark had Bride and that was uh, was phenomenal. Yes. I loved that book. It was so good. So, hope you do your job, Book of the Month, and bring some more and STEM not, romance. If not, because we know we'll get it. Our Vark will watch in you. And the next one, which I think will at the very least be an add on, mm-hmm. um, is Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. So, you guys remember Butcher and Blackbird. I <laughs> reviewed it kind of nervously because it is very, like, very spicy romance. Mm. And, like, it's the level of spice where they have trigger warnings. But it was such a big hit about these two serial killers falling in love. And mm. the sequel, Leather and Lark, is about um, one of the main serial killers, his brother from that book. And the other serial killer's best friend from that book meeting and falling in love. And it's kind of a hate to love, dark romantic comedy. It's got danger, chaos, and of course, a whole lot of spice. Yeah. I'm sure Book of the Month is going to carry this. Like, with well, the success. If they do, maybe they'll 
carry the third one too because it's the second in a trilogy. So this is true, and I think they tend if they pick up something knowing it's going to be that they mm -hmm. tend to carry it through. Yes, so that's what I think it will at least be an add-on. And we are coming to a close soon. We've got two more books, mm -hmm. but there, I feel like a lot of these are definitive. And, um, and and I, you know, every now and then, book of the month has instead of five, they have seven. And I feel like June is a month that they have seven because there's so many books coming out and so many good, really good books. So. For example, the next one, A Talent for Murder by Peter Swanson. And I do think I've predicted this author before. But a newlywed librarian begins to suspect the man she married might be a murderer. In this spectacularly twisty and deviously clever novel by Peter Swanson, he's New York Times bestselling, the kind worth, he wrote The Kind Worth Killing and Eight Perfect Murders. So, A Talent for Murder, again, by Peter Swanson. And this is another one of those. He's had some success on his own. And I've noticed Book of the Month picking the author, these authors up more. So, maybe they'll change some things up. Um, well, this one is All Roads Lead to Rome by Sabrina Fidel. And it's the daughter of a diplomat. And she, um, she is in Rome. And she ends up... Um, meeting up with this heartthrob who is um, a Scottish celebrity and uh, something comes about they're in a store bakery or somewhere together and he's trying to hide his uh, romantic liaisons with a pop star princess and somehow she gets drugged in here because the paparazzi shows up and all this and so they're, they're having this fake date kind of thing going on mm -hmm. to try and protect the relationship that's going on between him and someone else. Mm -hmm. They don't want paparazzi to know. And, but she is like, she knows everything about Rome and everything because her mother's been there uh, and they've lived there, you know, for a while. And so she takes him on all the, oh, the little back street. So here's the little hole in the wall where you have, you know, the best pasta or this or that or whatever. And, um, you know, the best time and, so they're doing this, but, you know, hearts and chemistry gets involved, and that's kind of what's going on. It starts happening, and she doesn't know how to deal with it because, hey, he's a celebrity. Hey, he's famous. He's handsome. He's hot. He's all of this. And how do I deal with this? You know, because she begins to have true feelings for him, and, and how do we deal with that? So um, I think it. I love the cover. It's beautiful. Um, but it could end up being an artwork instead of that. That's true. Their romances have been... They have really been very nice. So, yeah. And us, they, yes. Yes. Very, mm -hmm. very pretty book. Okay. Anyway, that's our predictions. So, and we're kind of all over the place this month. And we apologize. We've had There's a lot. so many books. <laughs> so much going on and so many books. It's kind of hard to narrow it down to just a couple. Yes. So... Let us know what you think and what maybe you have some more to add to the list. Just let us know in the comments. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>